Welcome everyone. Dr. Thor here, get ready for Gnosis. Well, in my continuing a series here on Christopher um, and his uh, actual contact with uh, extraterrestrials, or not really. Now, Christopher Bledsoe uh, is an interesting person. I've went into a lot of that. And, you know, there's a lot to say to this and um, uh, of what's going on. The reason I'm doing things on this case is because it's something that's going to be coming out and making a big splash soon when it hits the movie theaters um, uh, relatively soon. Uh, Bledsoe is stating that he got his information from the lady... Um, that in 2025, so he's got a whole year to milk this. I hope they're in production. Um, and I believe it, what was it, January or something, 2025, that all the world is going to change. We're going to love each other. We're going to live on love. Nobody's going to hate anymore. Ooh, we're going to another level. Now, Remember, people, I'm kind of an old-timer here, and the whole idea is that I've been around for quite some time. I've watched these things as a young lad. I watched them as a, um, a young adult, uh, listening to everybody stating, Oh, 1990, oh, this is, we're gonna, the Earth's gonna split open, and all the water's gonna rush in, and, uh, uh, you know, this... Stuff that Art uh, Bell used to push with his um, Earth Change maps. Of course, none of that stuff really ever happens. It is a slow process as the Earth heats up and all the things that are happening right now, um, which is kind of cyclical in the nature of the universe. Apparently, it's heating up in many places in the universe, by the way, on these very cold planets. But that's very interesting, the cycles of life, which I won't bore you with right now. Uh, so this production company has uh, paid for this book, I'm assuming. I don't know if they're in production. I'm not sure what's going on. But, you know, it takes a long time to make a movie and to re release it. If they don't get this in the can and done by the end, and of course you can certainly make a movie, even though these uh, egotistical movie monkeys who want to pay themselves millions of dollars to do jobs that could be done in a couple of weeks, we got to take years. You know, Put the camera here. Um, so the whole idea is, um, they're going to have to get this out by the, um, end of, uh, this, but they have time. Uh, so, uh, this is going to be a big thing. It's going to have a big splash. We're going to hear a lot about this and there's going to be a lot of speculation. Movies always do that for whatever reason. Uh, and something like this will, um, create. Now he's been doing this for 17 years. <laughs> Things are so much better. Thank you, Chris. We got no wars going on. We haven't had any diseases lately. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I've been living in a plastic trash can. I didn't see what was going on. So the whole idea is that uh, all of this goes on. But there are a lot of technical issues here to discuss. And there's a big issue to discuss here. Now, I've recently watched more interviews, particularly with his son, Ryan, which I believe is his, um, um, his youngest son. Now, he has a family of four, three boys and one girl. Now, his oldest son, uh, who was with him at the time and got exposed to these uh, orbs, um, pretty much ruined his life. Uh, now, Daddy's life was ruined anyway. Uh, he was... He lost his company. He's very, very ill. And by the way, he's still been ill and uh, apparently is. So, uh, oh, the healing they're doing to help mankind. <laughs> they don't even heal the uh, the person they're channeling through. So, here we go again. What a mess this is. Now, his son Ryan's a pretty intelligent person. Uh, he's very well read. And he's very well brainwashed. Now, I'll get an eye exactly into what's happening here, which what I think is going on here entirely. There's several issues here that are very important. Why are they important? Well, as a uh, force energy physicist trying to figure out energies and manifesting scientist, uh, which certainly we're talking about manifesting here. And life is all about manifesting. What can you manifest in life? Uh, wisdom? Health? 
Well, this is what life's all about, because you're born in a sewer that is going to beat against you. And very few people uh, get through life without being pretty horribly mangled and diseased and everything else. Um, and, of course, people are not really living longer, but it appears like that. And, of course, some people are. People are reaching their 90s now. People used to only reach their early 80s, middle 80s. Now they're all reaching their 90s. Not all. Uh, the uh, bottom line, internationally, the average uh, life expectancy is still about 80, uh, 80 years old, if we average everything out between the good and bad countries. Of course, the rich people live the longest. <laughs> what, what a surprise. Uh, so the whole idea is that, and maybe they ought to look at incomes and life expectancies, but that would be too uh, official. So... Um, so this is a very strange case, and let uh, let me clarify this. Uh, now, uh, the introduction to his book is terrible, UFO uh, of God or whatever, um, which ought to tell you right off the bat that this is not this is something that is he's considering spiritual. Now, I've watched several more interviews of him, and it's all the same. I never seen an extraterrestrial. I never saw that in my coo moonshine. Um, so the whole idea is that. Um, he's he's saying this now, so there's nothing to do it. Yet the introduction done by the um, uh, criminal intelligent agencies and military uh, all state UFO. They're not talking anything spiritual. Uh, yet that's not the story that we get from him and his son Ryan. As I said, his son Ryan is uh, well read. He's read all the uh, metaphysical occult literature. He knows about Atlantis, the ancient Egyptians. He's really studied this guy, and I give him credit for that. And he he is relatively intelligent. You know, the bottom line is not how, what, what you read and can regurgitate up and tell somebody, put on a little testy and get a biggie grade, and then they give you an idiot certificate. I'm an official moron. So the whole idea is that uh, that really is not what things come down to, and that's how we judge people. It's not whether they're intellectually advanced, uh, know what they're talking about, can figure something out. And the, one of the most difficult things or a near impossible to teach someone, you're supposed to get this over years of working. And that is how do you interpret your results? Now, science, it's a razor, suck and yeah, 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 it's got to be that. Oh. So, and the other stupidity that people put out there, um, Bayesian. Well, it had to happen before, if it's going to happen again. Uh, okay, well, uh, how scientific of you, Barney Rubble. And, of course, Ock and Razor. Everything's a rock. Okay. Um, you know, the, sh the obvious conclusion is the best one. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Everything's a rock. I've solved another mathematical equation that stumped mankind. Thank you, Dr. Thaw. So the whole idea is that uh, as we get involved in all these things out there, we need to understand this. So, so his son, of course, like his father, uh, has been brainwashed, mind-controlled um, by the, uh, the intelligence and military community. I don't believe that this is a phenomenon that is natural. And I do find it very interesting. Um, but at least it doesn't appear. What the military industrial complex is trying to do here with the cavalcade of dancers and performers they brought through to bring to this guy, um, and he's the perfect guy. So let me get back to his son, Ryan. So he's very well read, but you got to remember he is a young guy. And if I was his age, I probably would have been influenced as well, because I was generally a positive person. I was a person who um, believed in the system to a certain degree until I found out what the system did to you, how corrupt it was, how rotten they are, and everything else. And that doesn't go to just your scum bucket neighbors who are working for the criminals. It's all these people. And that goes for all the feds, the military, and everything else. They are not doing anything to help you, including their goofball scientists uh, that are nothing but whores for a murderous system like all your military people are. So, that's all they are. They're government murderers. They, they are not fighting for God and country. We've never been attacked, except in uh, uh, by the Japanese, 
who are buddies now. They make all the electronics. We got all their cards. <laughs> kind of was a waste of time fighting, wasn't it? <laughs> Except they wanted to make you into their little sex slaves and butcher you. <laughs> so um, they may have committed more atrocities than the Nazis. All covered up. We certainly know they killed 20 million Chinese just for the fun of it. <laughs> so, um... So we have all these things going on here that we have to fully understand. And all these issues I'm talking about are all part of the bigger part of life. It's not the fact of looking at this. So they found or they set up or whatever they did here, the perfect dupe. Um, a, a low-level, intelligent, hillbilly person who likes to wave the flag and kill animals and uh, do all that kind of stuff. Um, who also was very mentally unstable and very ill. So they knew they could control him. He's going to have to go to medical appointments. He's going to have to take drugs. Mm, let's just start to get together here a little bit, people. Um, if you think that all these people don't own all the doctors and everybody else, uh, you are in a special land of stupid. Uh, so the whole idea is I've seen this personally. I've seen it all, people. I know exactly what's going on. Now, um, so they picked this perfect kind of stupid, uh, to do that. Now you got to remember that he is involved in a Christian cult, a horrible Christian cult, or he used to be, and that includes his entire family and his psychotic wife who wants to believe in this particularly cult that talks in tongues and wants to live one, one step above really, or is it below the Amish in terms of uh, their kind of stuff? But it didn't bother her living in a million-dollar pad with a pool and everything else uh, while everybody's running barefoot in uh, North Carolina there, <laughs> chasing flies for entertainment. Um, so Daddy, uh, his daddy, uh, did very well in the construction business, and he took it over and did very well himself. Unfortunately, economics and everything else, you've got to remember that the construction business is very up and down. You either get very rich, or and then you run into really bad areas as well. And you've got to be careful uh, not to, for the bad times to destroy you. And when you make a fortune in the good times, you've got to put a lot of that money away. That's the way construction works, because these are big ticket items. So, and let's also remember, where is this guy located to and who was his customer base? Do, 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 do. Fort Bragg, baby! Head of the Special Forces! The um, man who looked at gold, so what was that? In? So this is the Fort Bragg, so he's, he's next to, and of course that's where the, um, I think that's where all the Special Forces uh, train out of. So he's right in the lap of this. Are the pieces coming together, people? So, um, so all of this came together, and um, what people don't understand because they don't have the background is they're taking people at face value. Now, I don't believe that this, I don't believe he's directly lying, but he's a delusional bumpkin. He doesn't understand this. It doesn't mean because he don't have a degree from Harvard, you know, where they give you a certificate, hey, more, more, Harvard, more. Oh, it's nice. Um, they don't uh, do that. So um, I don't believe in that. As, uh, you know, I don't believe that education, as we can see with um, so many noted physicists, of what kind of boobs they are. Um, so you don't give any, I don't give any credit to that, but you also have to be at a level of functioning, uh, that you can be open to everything. And you're not at that level if you're involved in a very radical, uh, cult. And that's what he's involved in, a radical cult. So, um... This is all part of the problem. And, of course, then everybody starts showing up, and they're all the same government conspiracy people. And it's it's comical of uh, the types of things that were going on with him, that they're asking, uh, they bring in. And, of course, what's interesting here is a lot of the stuff everybody misses. NASA is investigating extraterrestrials. Well, when was that part of it? Wasn't it the Air Force Project Bluey Book? <laughs> Wasn't that what's going on? Wasn't that? And of course, you know, they are. And so are the Navy's big into all this stuff. People don't quite understand that because they don't have that much to do. So a lot of jobs go to them and they have a special hit teams on every uh, ship, which are SEAL teams. So they're uh, ready and moving in with all sorts of special stuff that the Navy does that is kind of underestimated.
As well as the now very secret, after getting uh, some publicity, Delta Force. Again, this is uh, the army. You hear nothing about Delta Force. Apparently, they're stumble bums. Everything's the SEALs. So, um, I don't uh, believe that whatsoever. Uh, so, it's another way of switching. They switched and everything is about the SEALs. Everybody's publicizing them. Why? No. Um Certainly, I don't believe that one special forces is any better than the other. Some special forces or military groups are assigned to different activities, as the U.S. Rangers, uh, their job was to take and secure airports, like in Afghanistan. Uh, so the whole idea is that um, they have their different jobs and apparently the public, they're telling about the SEAL teams who really like all the other ones, the psychotic murderers they are. So... And the real dirty stuff, uh, they want you looking at the SEAL team members while they're doing a bunch of other stuff. So, he's located in Fort Bragg. He's in a religious cult. He's very vulnerable. And um, he may have been watched for years or uh, somehow came to their attention uh, to then go after him. Um, but, and why? What makes this guy a perfect... Well, he's gullible. He doesn't understand the bigger things in life. He believes in the mythology of religion. He's sick. He's manipulated. He can be injected with or given many different drugs as part of his healing. And all the things that go on with it. A lot of the things he's showing here and talking about are classic PSYOPs operations. Now, first of all, let's get back to the issue here. As he said, his son, Ryan, uh, has done a lot of research, but he comes to the same conclusion that Daddy does after all of this. Daddy hasn't read any of that. I doubt mean, if Daddy's even read the Bible. But he doesn't consider, and neither does his son, that these are extraterrestrials. And let's define that as well here. They consider these to be angels, spirit apparitions, dimensional entities. Now, I've talked about this uh, in the past, but we have to differentiate between the energies out there. And that's why it's so important to be a researcher. It's just like in uh, scalar radionics, uh, the whole idea is that we have to understand uh, what the energy is. And scalar uh, uh, radionics, to clarify it for most people, um, is non-electromagnetic. So we have to understand that. So if you're using an electric, directly electric machine, you're producing frequencies. Frequencies are not scalar. Okay. But I won't bore people with that. I have other videos on that if you want to watch those and be properly informed of this type of energy. Now, when I look at things like this, I don't really care about their personal stories. I don't really care about extraterrestrials. Really, I think it's mental masturbation. It's fascinating. It's kind of like um, fireworks. I don't think there's anything stupider than um, fireworks. It's stupid. Lights in the sky with a boom. But... It's fascinating. You can't. You kind of can't look away from it. You know, if it's shown to you, you're going to look at it. But it's completely stupid. So, and it's the same thing with extraterrestrials, free energy, and all this stuff. There is all worthless. So the whole idea is that none of this stuff is ever going to happen, and um, certainly uh, in anybody's lifetime, it won't happen for hundreds of years. Just as there will be no cures for hundreds of years. Because that's all part of the money chain that this uh, world works on. And they're getting more and more oppressive. As people are put more into becoming a number controlled uh, through the banking system of not being able to get cash. Um, so you're judged by, which is happening in China already. So if they don't like you, you can't get money out. You can't pay your bills, all those things. Uh, facial recognition, they know exactly who you are everywhere. So this kind of scenario has went way over the top and it's all there now and has been in use for many, many years. And who's doing all this? That this bumpkin wants, yay, we're in. and his son likes to say the same thing. Well, with the intelligence community, you mean the idiot, idiot community, non-intelligent community, military intelligence. <laughs> you know, they used to laugh about that because there's no such thing as military intelligence because they never did anything right. If for some route people think these boobs who have lied to you and the fact that NASA wants to meet with this guy and tell him what they know, the biggest lying scumbuckets there is, not to mention all the 
um, corruption that's in Nasha, all the money that they spent and disappeared and everything else, they are, just like every other military contractor, basically a part of the military, is the fact that there's all sorts of corruption and abuse going on there. NASA in itself is really bad. They haven't done much of anything, and we don't even have a rocket program uh, that we can get anything out in space. We decided to turn that over to booksellers, record makers, <laughs> and car makers. So, what I understand, um, Rocket X from uh, Musk, he's, he's forming a rocket that looks like a Tesla car. <laughs> so, the whole idea is that this is the kind of stuff that we turned on, over to because NASA don't know nothing. And it's the same old story as they said with the documents they had from Vietnam on how to fight a guerrilla war. Uh, they disappeared. I don't know. I gave it to Mike. He was just supposed to put it in an envelope and stick it behind a chair over there. Well, the chair's gone and so is the envelope. I don't know what's happening. I'm NASA. So the whole idea is this is the kind of stuff that goes on. So we have to fully understand these realities. So for somehow to pat NASA on the butt, and of course, everybody kind of loves the space program. It's really the ultimate frontier type thing. You know, once cowboys were given up by a, most of the population, except if you're should, um, everybody went to space. And this is when we had a lot of space toys and we had many missions to the moon. And it was quite fascinating. And, of course, this was technology of technology, also giving the Americans the thinking how superior they are, because we were the only people really to do it well, even though the Russians were the first ones in space. You know, most things have been done first by the Russians, and, of course, most everything else was uh, in world uh, history was done by the Chinese first. Printing press, everything. But the whole idea is that... Um, Not from the bozo they tell you it is. Gutengergerd, the Gutengergerd press. So the um, so all those things that go on um, is uh, fantasy. So all of that, and then of course to bring in the same kind of guy, and I'm going to do another video here on Colonel uh, John A. Alexander and who he is, what it's all about, etc. And he's a colonel for a reason, never made it to a general for another reason is that he uh, did not go through traditional ways of becoming an officer. But we'll talk about that, and I'll tell you why he didn't become a general, which is very, very interesting. And I don't believe that uh, Alexander, who's been retired since 1988 now, 35 years, but of course you're never retired, apparently, in his case, uh, which is even more insulting. Uh, he's not retired. And he always likes, they always put that there, and he, he, even, he even states it himself so he's, he can have that buffer from being actually in the military. It's um, another little game they play. But these intelligence people and people that work in those areas, and um, John Alexander was also connected with uh, General Hubblebein. Uh, who was a fantastic intellect and great person, one of the few military people I have some respect for after listening to an interview with him. Um, so, and of course, changed his ways and became an activist before he died or maybe was even killed. Who the hell knows? But he was pretty old. Um, but we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, or I should say in another video. Stay tuned for that. Very interesting story there, which you're probably not going to hear from anybody else. Uh, and again, I've been doing this for, I've been a professional researcher for 55 years now. you got to remember that. Well, I'm not professional, but I've been researching ever since I was very young. I, I didn't spend my time listening to the radio and jiving around like all the other bums were. Uh, I spent time researching in the libraries, even as a very young child. And I didn't go and look at um, the bullshit magazines and other stuff. I, I used to look a lot in the government publication section. So... Keeping that all in mind is very, very um, critical that, so that you know who, where you're getting information from. So to get back to the story here, uh, both, um, uh, both Chris and his son Ryan believe that these are angels, angels that cut the throat of your dog, angels that don't really heal you, angels that are nasty, angels with glowing red eyes. <laughs> oh, man. 
So, while his son has educated himself on occultism and has understood it from its basic uh, proper way, occult meaning hidden, and doesn't have too many problems with that, um, and understands that there's good and bad uses of any energy. Um, so those are things that we have to understand in the bigger picture as well. So, but that didn't stop him from being uh, impressed by colonels and NASA boys. And I'm sure he's got a collection of little pins that say, I went to NASA and they gave me a pin. Um, so the whole idea is all that stuff that goes with it. It's really a comical story when you really get into it and the kind of government shenanigans and nonsense of what they actually did to this with this guy. So the whole thing just reeks of an entire black op against this guy and for the final coup de grace against Dan. Now there's two, now there, you know, I've, I've stated this before. There's types of quote UFOs. Uh, now we can add, uh, I don't know if I ever added that. There's basically four types of UFOs. There's military unidentified objects. There's earth-based unidentified objects, meaning stuff that pops out of the earth. You know, there's a lot of times that lights come out of the earth. They believe this is from crystals in the earth pressing together. And if you know anything about crystals, if you just tap them together, they spark. So you have that type of thing there. Then you have um, um, alien extraterrestrial UFOs. And the fourth one we can add in there, which kind of blend into each other, but let's set them up as separate right now. Uh, and this would be spirit UFOs, unidentified objects that pop around that have been seen for tens of thousands of years, recorded in books. This is what all the old grimoires talk about, how to access these kind of spiritual energies. And those people that uh, really want to get empowered. And, you know, I started in the area of occultism, and I'm going to probably be going back to some of this stuff, uh, making a hybrid uh, machine and spirit things, is that uh, this is what people have been using for years. And I've always believed that um, uh, these extraterrestrials set themselves up as gods so that people who could figure out their system and it would take higher intelligence, study, um, worship to a degree, could then access the powers or the they could get into the quote, if we want to use common terms, they could get into the data bank and the computer that the uh, aliens had set up, extraterrestrial physical entities had set up in the etheric, so to speak. So I've always kind of believed that and I've talked about that before. So we have these uh, different types of, of unidentified uh, objects, and they're flying objects generally. Um, so we can still use that term, but we have to clarify what it is. We have to hyphenate it. Now, 99% of what people see in the sky is all military stuff. And of course, they don't talk about that. It's interesting that uh, old Chrissy boy and his little kitty Ryan didn't talk about the anti-gravity, all the other free energies, the cures they have, because what they're doing here is setting up to debunk that. Because if there are extraterrestrials, physical, and let's remember, extraterrestrials uh, are physical entities from another planet. Physical. Now, whether they can become unphysical is not part of it. They start off as physical ent entities, um, biological entities, basically similar to humans, because you have to be in that shape to do much of anything. If you don't have <coughs> hands and legs, how are you going to build it? You know, elephants are super smart. They can't build anything because they ain't got no hands. So, um, so the whole idea is that we have to understand that. So any type of entity out there, um, uh, whether it's Earth-based or extraterrestrial, is going to have to look like that in some fashion. Now, just because they have, uh, they stand up and they have um, hands and legs, doesn't mean that they look identical to humans. That's going to change radically depending on their environment. If you're going to be traveling through space, you're coming from heavy atmospheres, which are pressing down on you. You're going to have very uh, uh, strong bone structure. Uh, we don't have an atmosphere that's all that powerful. Our gravitational fields are critical, but they're not pushing down so much that we have built, you know, that we're small, that we have these giant legs. So all these things could be to the factors. Um, so it's very, very fascinating when you get into this stuff and look at it all. So... Uh, that's what an extraterrestrial is, a physical entity from another planet who comes here and by physical means in a physical ship. Now, whether that ship uh, at one time or another turns into pure energy 
and they're able to either project themselves or go through vortex. Or that's not the point. What did they start off as? Now, when we're talking about spirit entities or angels, they're never physical to start off with. They are non-physical to start off with and can become physical. So it's kind of the opposite, which is very fascinating to think about. Now, spirits, and they have been studied. Uh, there has been pictures taken of them, everything else. And this goes from ghosts to everything else. But, you know, ghosts, ghosts and poltergeists, that horrible term uh, that was created, of course, by the idiot uh, um, German Arabs. Uh, noisy ghost. What is that? How stupid is that? So the whole idea is that um, we have to understand uh, the terminologies we have here. But the bottom line is, is that uh, ghosts can become physical. They can hit you, knock you down. Uh, they knock things off of shelves. Um, there's all sorts of things. They some occasionally show themselves physically as something you can identify. But oftentimes they materialize as an orb as a glowing, and this is very, very common. The same thing happens in occult practices. If you uh, evoke, meaning you bring to you in the outside of you, invoking means bring it into your physical body, which you do with positive entities, uh -huh. um, but regular entities you're unsure of, you evoke, which means they come as an energy form in front of you. Now, uh, occasionally you can make out a form, but usually they're energy balls, they're orbs. That's how they usually appear to themselves. To think that a spirit's going to take the time and energy to, to uh, show themselves to you in a particular form, well, uh, this has been claimed for a lot of times. I'm sure it does happen. People claim to have pictures and everything else, um, uh, drawings, and this is nothing new. This goes back uh, as old as civilization itself, I would say at least uh, twenty to 50,000 years um, that these practices have been done. And uh, everybody does some sort of this kind of practice um, throughout history. So we have it. Um, his son talked a lot about the Egyptians and the energies and everything else out there. It's all very fascinating um, uh, when you get into this. But they're non-physical and they become physical. So they can push you. They can hit you. They can knock you downstairs. They can do all sorts of things. Okay. They can possess you and work through you because after all, they have to do that if they're going to do something. Uh, this is pretty typical of Argo. Argo, who was in Brazil for many years uh, as the, they call them the rusty knife guy. And he would go in um, and uh, be guided by a spirit that possessed him uh, that would then uh, do surgery and everything else. And the famous Andre Pusharek, uh, who was a, um, a medical MD, um, went and experienced this. And they actually took a benign tumor out of him, a physical tumor, and put it in a actual jar. Now, a lot of people don't even understand what exporting is. And we're not talking about goods. Exporting is something that has been detailed in the... Um, particularly the book about uh, the secret psychics of China who were working on exportation where they would pull something out of um, a physical entity. And they did this with chickens and everything else. They'd put something in and they would actually go in there psychically and pull it out or other things similar to that. So that's called exporting. And that is actually um, a method of removing things from people. Now, so the whole idea here is that we have to be very careful in the bigger picture of what's going on here. So, um, so basically, the first things that these uh, contactees, these government contactees, to told um, uh, Chris here was not to talk to UFO people because this skews your opinion. And he has said this many, many times, that if you don't talk to them and they say, well, I saw this kind of creature, you say, gee, yeah, I didn't think about that, but you're right. And then their information becomes your information. Now, to a degree, I believe that this could be a problem. On the other hand, it could also be a great help. If these are similar entities and they have similar um, experiences as you, you can then fill in a lot of things that you don't understand. So it can be very helpful, but not if you're in a black ops program because they don't want any outside influences. And apparently... The MUFON people, which I believe are all um, government-owned, 
Uh, they must have infiltrators and all that. You got to remember, everything is infiltrated, and the government has endless amounts of money. And they seem to have um, no problem infiltrating any kind of organization anywhere, even if you're four or five people. Uh, they do this all the time. And they've been doing this for at least 70 years. Uh, so um, this is just notorious because they have endless amounts of money for this stuff. And uh, since basically when it comes to domestic situations, the world is pretty safe, people. Uh, people are getting desperate now, but before the desperate times, the world is pretty safe. There isn't all that much going on. Uh, we're brainwashed that we need all these cops and their guns so that they can come and rape and rob us, uh, or allow their buddies, uh, that they support to rape and rob us. Um, so this, this is the reality that is out there. So, uh, but this whole thing reeks of a black op. Now, one of the things that has been studied and talked about, or particularly uh, for many, many years, is the 3D... And, of course, John A. Baby Alexander Baby um, is well aware of this. Holographic projections and, of course, uh, holographic images and so forth. They're very fascinating and something that really hasn't come to the public quite yet. I mean, I saw fantastic uh, holographs. I believe it was in 1964 at Disneyland at the Haunted House. And this was back then. Well, oh my God, this was mind-screwing. But they had holographic uh, projections using it in the Haunted House of severed heads that talk to you. Really mind-blowing back then. So this technology, which was very workable and perfect back then, now is still not being used for one reason or another. Holographic images and so forth, TVs and all that stuff have uh, went by the wayside for one reason or another. I'm not sure if they'll ever pop up and if there's ever much of an interest. They keep making clearer and clearer pictures, which I think is kind of absurd. What are we up to? 4K, 6K now um, of images on a screen. Uh, who cares? Can you tell that any difference from Blu-ray, which is 1K? I don't think so. Uh, so I don't know what they think they're going to do with all that stuff, but it may help with color adjustment and other things in the bigger picture. But most people who want to watch a movie on their cell phone um, while they're dancing in the airport or going in a taxi cab, yeah, we need them perfect pictures. Uh, so it doesn't really make much sense to me. You know, people went from giant screens, which I guess there's still interest out there, to, to little cell phones where you don't really see much of anything. You can't really pick up any great detail on them anyway um, if you're trying to get a, a picture uh, or a feeling from a particular image, particularly a movie. Um, I was always a big fan of IMAX, where they have these 90 feet high screens. I think they're 90 by 90. Now, that's an experience. Uh, or even a big screen TV. If anybody has one, you know how different it is from watching the little tinker toys that everybody's had in the past. And going from your big screen TV to your actual um, cell phone is comic. Cell phones have their purpose. Not for entertainment, people. Whatever. And so on. Or looking at websites or anything else. I tell people that when you go to my website, make sure you have a web view. If you have a um, a phone view, you're you're missing everything. It's not, they're all set up to be looked at in a proper screen in a proper way, but it doesn't look too bad on a cell phone when you have the web view. And you should be doing that in general for everybody. But let's get back to the, the case here. So what what do I think is going on here? Now his whole story is the very very common. Uh, you're out someplace uh, in a relatively deserted area. You wander off or directed to wander off and something happens. Now, and this story just gets more and more in-depth. It's really fascinating. And, of course, unless you want to repeat my 30 or 40 hours of research I put into this, which is really only scratching the top of the surface, but uh, the whole idea is I'm a professional researcher. I've done this for years. I know all about extraterrestrials, spirits, and everything else. I'm a very unique individual because you're not going to find too many people that are into, quote, science, that um, alternative science, that are also into metaphysical and occult. And into extraterrestrials. And usually each group laughs at the other. It's always amusing how uh, the occultists laugh at the um, UFO people and the UFO people laugh at um, the occult people. And uh, so it, uh, the mix there is, is not really going on. Uh, they all have their own mindset and usually it's wrong. So as we continue in this area, 
Okay, well, we're going to end here on part one of this, or this may be part seven, technically, uh, and we'll pick up in the uh, next uh, video.